The rules are behind me, they're gonna be covered up, but you also have the rules in your packet. So log base four. Why would I, yeah. Yes, yes. If I cover things, then I assess you on it. Glad we got that out of the way. All right, so guys, if you notice right here, you have two pieces being multiplied together, which means that you are going to use the product property, which is going to be addition. Also, at the same time, you actually have a power here. This is the square root of X. What is X being raised to? Right, so that half is gonna get dropped in front of the word log. So when we expand this, it's just going to be log base four of five plus one half log base four of X. So I'm gonna be covering a bunch of different stuff today. You guys have got to speak up if you have questions. I'm not really gonna pause unless you tell me to. So if you have any questions at all, you've got to go, you got to tell me. Otherwise I'm rolling. That's going to be the final answer in expanded form. Okay. This one is just kind of cleaning out the cobwebs again. Log of the square root of two X divided by Y. Can you hear me? No, you can't. You have your AirPod in. AirPod. Can you take it out? I think that there's a direct correlation. You too, Nick. If I call him out, it's you too, buddy. Yep. Well, whatever. It's plugged up in your ears. Guys, what is the base understood to be? 10. The base is 10. Good. So again, we have some um, multiplication. We have two things that are gonna be added. The two and the X are going to be added. The Y is going to be subtracted, but all of them have the same power. They all have a power of one half. You have three pieces that make up that single fraction right there. So you're gonna have three terms in your expanded form. So it is going to be one half log two plus one half log X minus one half log y. Your expanded form, your powers have to be dropped in the front or else it won't be complete. Expanded form has to have the powers out in the front. Okay, this is speed. This is your speed test. Go, go, go. By the way, that's the letter S. All right, guys, again, three pieces are gonna make this up. You're gonna have a plus for an S, you're gonna have a plus for the seven, you're gonna have a minus for the T. Uh, the seven's gonna have a one half in front of it, the T's gonna have a two in front of it. So when we expand this out, it is gonna be log S plus one half log seven minus two log T. All right, so um, you guys know your properties. So on page seven in your packet, there's there's a lot. It's not like just two or three. Hold on, let me straighten my paper. 
You're just gonna have to. You're just gonna have to know. There's a couple of teacher tricks or a couple of things that could get overlooked. Log base B to the B. Anytime you guys have two numbers next to each other that are identical on logs, that always equals one. And then log base of whatever, log base of who cares, as long as the argument's one, it's zero. Log base 10, log base 987, as long as that's a one, this term right here, this expression equals zero. That expression equals one, that expression equals zero. You've got to be able to pick up on those. That's what's gonna separate the A's from the B's tomorrow. You've gotta to find those. They're going to be hiding tomorrow. Number four is an example here. Yes. Is it only when log base is 10? No, any base at all. If that number is one, it's always zero. Okay. So on number four, um, we've got these going on here. So log base three of three, that's a one. That's just a form of one. But the answer is not a two here. I'm sorry. Yeah, the answer is not two. Six. No. So remember your order of operations, please. That's a one. Just this piece right here is a one. But remember that log's being multiplied by a five. Just do your order of operations, guys. The answer is six. Log base six of one minus log one. So listen, before I forget, when it comes to logs, and if you happen to get stuck tomorrow, the thing is, if there's a bunch of words, if log happens more than once in a one problem, you're probably trying to consolidate it into one. If the word log only appears once, you're probably trying to expand it where your answer has the log written more than once. So just kind of remember that whatever the problem shows that the log is appearing more than once, then I might be trying to consolidate that. If the word log is just printed once, I might be trying to expand that. So always keep that in the back of your head. Y'all that's zero. Yeah, that's zero. Does anybody have any questions? All right, so here's where we amp it up a little bit. Yep. All right. So how many times is the word log written once? So if we don't know how to tackle this problem, then let's start trying to break it up. However, um, well, let's kind of, let's talk about it. What is the base of this? What is the base of the log? Ten. The base is 10. Remember it's 10 when it's not written. And then how many terms are here? One. Y'all, how many fractions is that? It's one fraction. That's one term. That one term is being squared. So technically, we can dump the two to the top and the two to the bottom. However, that is a fraction. And what do you always make sure you do with fractions? Simplify. Yeah, y'all better factor and see if any of those terms cancel out. If you see anything that might be factorable, you better factor that and see if something cancels. So before I even try to worry about the word log or even worry about that exponent, let's see what's going on here. 
Let's see if the bottom is factor low. So of course it is going to be factorable because three and five are going to be our key numbers here. So that trinomial factor is too bad. What do you guys notice what's happening? Right. And do y'all remember what's going to go at the top? Yeah, OK. All right, good. Okay, so we're All right. So here's, here's what we got, guys. Okay, so again, I can totally dump that two in there because that's one fraction, one term. Oh, I didn't even, I don't even need these brackets, but since I went ahead and drawn them, I'll go ahead and draw the closing bracket. But what I do need for sure are the parentheses down here. We've got division, which means We've got to subtract. So it is going to be log one times one, of course, is one. It's going to be log one. That's driving me crazy, by the way, but we'll deal with it later. Minus log the denominator, 3x minus 5 in parentheses. Okay, do y'all know why this is driving me crazy? That's a zero. Got to pick up on that. Also, I wasn't really done expanding. Is there something that can go in front of that minus sign? Yes. yes. So your answer to simplify this is going to be negative two log, but y'all that three X minus five has to be in parentheses. So the zero went away. And then, of course, we brought the power down as a factor. Believe it or not, we're almost done. So this is the last one I'm going to do with you. Then we're going to have test of a genius. Then you're going to have an exit. And then you guys have got to start your homework with me in class. So I'm going to ask you to simplify that, please. And I'm going to give you all some time to see what you can do with this. We're almost done. Give this all of your energy.
Hopefully you see a couple of things already. Hopefully, hopefully you see log base eight of eight. So there's a one there. And then y'all, everybody knows that squared minus one. You guys know what that is after it. So we got to simplify that fraction too. Okay, so when we expand this out, it's gonna be log base eight of eight plus log base eight of that one uh, minus, so I'm working on the denominator, minus two log base eight of X minus one. There's something wrong in my line of work. What's wrong here? Oh, yeah, okay, there's a lot wrong. I didn't even hear. What's log base eight of eight? What's log base eight of one? Zero. Yeah, but y'all, this right here it was what I was wanting y'all to pick up. Yeah, you guys have got to put parentheses in it. So let me go kind of clean up those parentheses. All right, so one plus zero minus two log base eight of X minus one. So same thing, everything's gonna, I mean, the zero term's gonna cancel out. We're gonna have one minus that. That's gonna be our answer. Okay. Test of a genius. This is actually problem 20 on your homework. That's the hardest one I saw in there. See if you can do this. 17. Your homework is page 17. All of it is due tomorrow. I am taking a grade on it. So I'm asking you to simplify that. What's an L then? Natural log. It's a log with a base E, the natural number. E is like pi. It's a ratio of something that just appears in nature and it goes on forever. Like it's the only other um, irrational number that's that's not a non-perfect. Like how do you solve You can't solve, how do you solve for pi? Like how do, where does E exist? It exists in the Fibonacci numbers. You know what that is? Have you ever seen a triangle of numbers? It's like a pattern. Um, you know, a conch shell, the swirl shell. I think there's the ratio of uh, E that makes those swirls, just stuff like that. Yeah, I heard the ratio. Okay, go. Guys, are y'all dead? No, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I have the question. What? Hold on, just a second. Which day were you absent? 
the first like the, the day that we started the dog thing is this oh tuesday are we here on thursday last week yes May. So if you're trying to do the, I would just wait. That's not applicable to this at all. No. No, you can't factor the LN. You have to use your power property. That'll consolidate your stuff. So remember what I said earlier. Um, if there's a lot of logs or LNs printed, then you probably want to consolidate. I mean, you need to use this stuff. Y'all need to study tonight. That was a video. So the first page, there's nothing on the first page. So those next two pages that are blank, those were video lessons that you guys should have paid attention to to follow along on your own. It was part one of part two. My question is where are you specific values of LN? LN is the natural log of D. Did you complete the note? Show me the note. What was that? How'd you say no? No. No. What a stupid question, Ms. Harrington. No, I didn't take the notes. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to consolidate what this looks like. So if I want to be able to write the LN once, guys, what happens when two things are added together? What does that mean? Very good. And what happens with this minus? So what's going to happen is it's going to be X, oh, that term right there, X over X minus one times that, because that's a plus sign. So this is X plus one over X minus is division divided by X squared minus one. Use my order of operations. So I don't, I don't even care about the LN right now. I'm just gonna focus on cleaning up you know, the fractions. So when I multiply these together, I'm going to multiply first. Guys, those X's are gonna cancel out. So this is going to be X plus one over X minus one divided by X squared minus one. And you guys know leave change flip. So we're gonna leave the first fraction alone. We're going to change the multiplication, I'm sorry, the division into multiplication, and we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. Guys, at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and factor. So again, we still have things that simplify. We have an X plus one on top and an X plus one on the bottom. So this LN 
is going to turn into one over x minus one squared. I see a one that makes me feel like there might be a zero or some weird answer hanging out there. So I'm going to expand this back. So this is going to be ln of one minus this denominator, but I'm not writing ln. What am I writing first? The two. Good job. It's just like log. So do not box that in. Again, this is what's going to separate the A's from the B's tomorrow. So that is a natural number. What is that number? Zero. That's a zero. So I, I, I would not expect y'all to show this step. I'm just showing this for the sake of notes. So your final answer is negative two ln x minus one. I don't waste time. Yes. Okay. So are there any other questions? Guys, here's your exit. Certainly got to know that too.